All right, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to another We've Read the Documents live stream. I'm your host, John Brisson. Today, this evening, I have with me Laura from Magical Mystery Church, um, who I've been following her work for a while, me and Jeremy Stone from By Their Fruits, and hopefully we will be starting back doing podcasts, Lord willing, uh, in the next uh, few weeks or months together. I had interviewed uh, Laura once before, so you can go listen to... Um, uh, that interview on By Their Fruits. Uh, keep uh, Jeremy Stone and his family in your prayers. Um, and so I, you know, definitely want to welcome Laura back. Um, if you, uh, I, if you followed me, I have um, shared some of Laura's videos. Um, I have retweeted some of her videos on Twitter. Um, I'm greatly appreciative of the body of the work that she has done, uh, exposing New Age and Gnosticism within uh, the. Um, the uh, church, and as well as the New Apostolic Reformation, um, and uh, to the transition of the Great Awakening, to the phone, I mean, the transition from the Great Reset to the phony Great Awakening, uh, as well as the Council for National Policy. So thank you for joining us this evening, Laura. Thank you, John. It's nice to be here. Yeah, so, um, okay, so... Kind of building upon uh, the previous interview, which you gave your testimony and how you came to Christ, um, I'm not going to have you uh, repeat it on, on this stream. So go back; the other stream is listed on my on my Odyssey channel, and a lot of my listeners are are um, familiar to your story and follow you as well, uh, too. Um, and so, I, I do have a question though that I don't think I asked last time. Uh, which was, and maybe you did elaborate on it, and if you did, I apologize. Um, what got you to start realizing the Great Reset to Great Awakening type narrative was what was at play instead of uh, the kind of the general conspiracy narrative uh, which sadly many Christians are still under the delusion of, of that's what the New World Order system is going to be, which is going to be kind of like a complete totalitarian 1984 system, which Christians will be persecuted under that system, do not get me wrong, but it's going to be more of a guise and a love and light thing, and, you know, Christians are kind of be blamed to keeping people from being able to experience a fallen, satanic, libertine society uh, within the future, uh, do what thou wilt. Um, and, uh, you know, the only people standing in the way are those pesky Christians. We have to get rid of them to keep this from happening, uh, uh, or to keep them from, you know, uh, spoiling, uh, you know, what is happening after we've been saved, you know, which will be by the Antichrist, we believe, um, um, which, you know, will usher in the destruction of the old world order, which I believe the heartland is Jerusalem, uh, to the new world order. Um, and so what you know, pivoted you from that kind of st even belief that permeates the church today and permeates conspiracy, you know, conspiracy belief and culture, uh, to kind of realizing that, you know, that, 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 you know, it, that may not be exactly how, uh, you know, things are going to, uh, happen and be revealed through biblical prophecy of, of the future. And I've, and I've discussed it on my channel. If you've seen my my Beast in the Heartless series, uh, the first yeah. video, uh, when my mind was blown, uh, I had I had um, listened to John from E511 Ministries, uh, who um, God had used to press upon my heart uh, that that this was occurring. You know, I had inklings, obviously, before then. You know, I've learned about the secret right and everything, but I had not realized, um, you know, I was still in that kind of truth or mindset. Uh, but it was John's videos that kind of knocked me out of it and was like, wait a minute, that's not really biblical. Um, so what about you? Uh, when did you come um, very, to that realization? Very uh, similar to you, John. Um, I wasn't in the truth or stuff as long as like you were as many years, um, maybe a couple years. And, you know, I had the preconceived notion of the end times, which, you know, never really was taught that much in my church years. But um, of the, you know, oppressive 1984 type, you know, s scenario and like Obama is the Antichrist or somebody that's real obviously evil. Yes. And so when I was listening to like truth or stuff, you know, I did ha hear a little bit of QAnon and it was kind of like iffy, but somewhat hopeful, you know, and, but it was right around the, you know, everything that shut down, you know, in 2020, the lockdown and all that stuff is when I really started, um, 
really started doubting the whole QAnon thing because yeah. it occurred to me, what if, you know, my thinking might not have been completely right, but I was thinking, what if they're saying, you know, to trust the plan, sit back and relax and eat your popcorn because they don't want anyone to be alarmed that there's a lockdown, that Trump ha made a state of emergency and all all that stuff, you know, and I, that's kind of what started it. And then I was, I think I was listening to you then. I started, or maybe I heard Alex, probably Alexandra first. Yeah, so you're probably listening to probably Alexandria. Yeah. Um, okay, okay. And and John from E E511, John. And that was the first step that got me starting to think this whole left-right thing. I, you know, I was still seeing all this um new world order what you know truth or stuff but i still saw it all as the lefties doing everything yeah. you know mostly and so it was very eye-opening the more i started finding out through for the people like that and like you that maybe it's not at all what we thought like maybe the big bad scary boogeyman is the one that we're not that, that's behind our back because we're yeah. we're all pointing at the the um Paul Schwab and the World Economic Forum, all those guys that are obviously evil and they yes. are planning evil things. But meanwhile, behind our back, the people that we trust are gonna stick us with a knot. Like the son of perdition was the only time that word was used was for the Antichrist and Apostle of Jesus. That no one knew, even at the Last Supper, nobody knew. They didn't know it was him. Yeah. Maybe he didn't even know it was him. Um, I think he did, but maybe he didn't know anyway that maybe it's someone much closer to us, you know, that or a group that's much more closer to us as Christians that are. um, Yeah. Well, I think I think Judas. Well, mm -hmm. I, I think Judas knew that he was going to eventually likely turn in Jesus because he was yeah. the money. Uh, he kept the money. Um, yeah. and, uh, he was angry that, you know, they were anointing Jesus with oil that was costly. And, you know, why is that money given to the poor? But in reality, he just wanted to steal the money. He didn't care if the money was given to the poor or not. Um, and, but I don't think that he knew that Jesus was going to be crucified, uh, yeah. because of his actions. He thought that they were just going to arrest him. Uh, yeah. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I think biblically he, Judas did not know that. And also Satan entered into Judas, too, uh, which right. um, Satan, you know, is not talked about him specifically possessing uh, many other people in the Bible, but he possessed yeah. Judas. Um, yeah. And so, you know, Judas did eventually have remorse, but he never repented um, and he committed suicide. Um, and so... You know, it's you're right. I mean, Satan appears as an angel of light. Uh, and so, you know, he's he's setting up the this false, you know, dichotomy and in Mason Freemasonry. We see that, you know, the the, yeah. the black or white checkerboard uh, dark to light within the QAnon mythos. Uh, and so yeah. we know within God, there is no darkness, that there is only light. Uh, so, you know, that destroys that kind of Freemasonry, Masonic duality. Uh, that even yeah. existed before Freemasonry, as more mystery yeah. Babylon taught. Um, but, you know, um, you know, so they kind of push. We're under the old world order. We're under the totalitarian boot on your neck. You know, the evil is finally, you know, uncloaked and unmasked. Not completely, not yet, but it's getting there. And so the average person's kind of waking up to this now. You've read Alice Bailey. You know that they were talking about this, you know, in, in the, er, the early, uh, you know, the theosophists were talking about this in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Okay, yeah. and so this was you kind of foretold that 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 the the uh, uninitiate uh, would become initiated, and they would become initiated from kind of like this dark to light uh, to to um, to quote unquote raise their consciousness or raise their awareness to the quote unquote truth, right? Yeah. So that's what's happening is is people are becoming initiated. They're finally yes. you know seeing the evil. You know, front and and all, and all that has corrupted all the institutions, okay, and 
you know, but the problem is, is what is, you know, who and what is going to quote unquote save them from an earthly standpoint is going to be the Antichrist. And the B system, the New World Order, is going to look like love and light. It's like, oh, yay, this this guy just took, you know, I was getting stomped on in the neck by this one guy, but this guy just took that other guy out, right? And he's trying to help me up. But I didn't know he's got a dagger behind his back ready to stab me and kill me too, you know? So that's kind of how it's going to be. And, you know, like as Jesus said, if, even if it's possible for even the very elect to be deceived— it's it's going to be like the stuff that we're seeing now is only a glimpse of it. Imagine yeah. how crazier it's going to. I mean, what is it going to be a false alien invasion? Like, like how far is it going to go to 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 continue to rem people for them to remain deluded? Because, you know, and I want to get your opinion on this. One of the one of the. Um, I would say sad uh, things of revelation is NAR are pushing like there's going to be this giant revival, right? Which we know just is not going to happen. Okay. Even, uh, the Catholics, I'm going to do a stream on this. Uh, they have something called the warning, uh, where, um, they believe that for a few mo or the illumination of conscience is what the conscious, what they call it. And, um, for a few moments, and this happened from some visions, you know, from Marian apparition. Okay. That, um, for a few moments, everybody on earth during the, you know, the end times will ha have, see God and will have a press upon their conscience and a choice to accept God or not. That's not in the Bible. That is, that's not anywhere in the Bible. Uh, but that, to me, sounds ex very new age and sounds exactly the type of stuff that would come out of Barbara Marks Hubbard's mouth. And it's not true. Yeah. And so, you know, you have all of these new agers and all of this false, phony, you know, mystery Babylon religion getting, you know, people in their own delusion to think that these love and light things are going to happen and it's for their benefit, but it's anything but. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think that like right now we have a lot of, um, you know, all the Trump prophets that were wrong and calling out the false prophets because they're falsely prophesying and nothing they say ever happens. And all these things, I think there's, uh, this is just my opinion, but it's, it's that it is biblical about lying signs and wonders and false signs and wonders. Yeah. And the false prophet's going to call fire down from heaven and do all these things. I think these people, something's going to, something's going to click. I don't know. Maybe it's, when, they, you know, preparing toward when the Antichrist actually shows up or whatever. Um, I think they're going to start doing real miracle, not real miracles, but satanic miracles. They're, they're, they're training and teaching and occult powers and psychic powers. We watched, Bill, That's what you watched uh, Mike Winger's video on Bill Johnson and Bethel, right? Did you see it today? Yeah, I saw oh. it. I, I saw it. I watched most of it. I think it came out yesterday. Um, I watched both of it, but I mean, I mean, they, they call it Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. I mean, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, it is. And I, I mean, I, I mean, I believe in the supernatural and I, and, and from what I've read now, you know, that these um, occultists do real things. I mean, they're deceived and they're, and whatever, but um there, I think a lot of the things, their their rituals, whatever, their um, incarnations, initiations, which are just like levels of becoming possessed. Yes. Like little steps at a time, because if you became possessed all at once, then you would be like the exorcist or whatever. But they do incrementally. So they're slowly being taken over by a spirit. Well, I mean, yeah. And I mean You've heard of people having night terrors uh, within the New Age with the occult and people yeah. having delusions and visions. And it seems to be, for in most cases, not always, but in most cases, it seems to be a progressive thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, yes, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to get crazy. I mean, I'm not going to probably, in my videos and stuff, I probably am not going to get too much into the alien stuff 
but if I, I want to stick to things that I think are affecting um, Christians, yeah, you know, um, that they might actually fall for or are falling for, whatever. But who knows? You know what I mean? Who knows? I just think that it, there is going to come a point where mi- miraculous and, and wild things are going to be happening. And the the ability to stand firm is going to it's going to be very it's going to be harder and harder to stand firm and to stay true to the Lord and have your faith in Jesus and in his word. And even though you're seeing things, whether they're scary or amazing, you 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 just I keep I keep stressing I can't stress it enough to um to be grounded in the Bible yeah. and to be continually renewing your mind with it like as much as you can you know whether you memorize it or not but just to be listening to the word reading it and understanding what what is coming and how much we really were prepared um you know, in the word to, to see some of this, the, all this deception that's going to be happening, you know? Yeah. Um, it's going to be like nothing has ever, that has ever been seen. Uh, I mean, you know, Jesus yeah. says like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, like the, you know, the days of Lot, like the days of Noah, uh, you know, and so yeah. the, most people are going to be partying. They're not going to think anything of it. Um, you know, they're not going to have a care in the world that was happening during Noah's time. Uh, and then, you know, the yeah. door of the ark closed, right? And the world was flooded, right? And it was too late, right? And so, you know, that's yeah. one of the, I guess, to finish what I was saying earlier, one of the sad things about the book of Revelation and that, you know, it, it, the, most of these NAR people are, are preaching a, a strong revival, a strong revival, you know, and the book of Revelation actually, sh- uh, at least my interpretation and the interpretation of you know, Jesus' words about the end times and Paul's and the Old Testament prophets is that, um, you know, yes, there will be Jews. You know, God is going to use um, uh, this time to bring the Israelites, who is partially blinded during the time of the Gentiles, and they blinded themselves too with their own arrogance and hubris, um, to uh, repent and to believe in Jesus Christ as uh, the true Lord and Savior. Um, and there, there will be Gentiles that will be saved during uh, the end times, but um, it's not going to be very many people. Um, you know, it's not yeah. going to be in the, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be in the millions. You know, um, I don't think there's going to be a great revival. I think that's New Age mysticism. The Bible doesn't teach that. Uh, and, you yeah. know, you know when, I believe in the literal millennial reign of Christ. Um, you know, I believe during that time period where Jesus is sitting in Jerusalem and us as, you know, his um, saints, you know, preaching the gospel to the word, to the people during the millennial reign, there will still be people with being able to see Jesus, yeah. have us yeah. preach the gospel and hear Jesus will still deny yeah. him, you know, like, yeah. and still be in sin. So yeah. imagine that. Yeah, I know. That's something that that's something I really honestly haven't learned a lot about until this last couple of years. Like I never really understood what what was that for? You know, like yeah. what was that in there for? Like, and if you're depending on what kind of church you're in, like especially if you're in like charismatic church, they just don't get in they i wasn't in a church that was very if i knew anything about end time stuff it was probably from maybe some sunday school class that was specially just about that for a short period of time or a movie or something on tv but it was never ever really taught from the pulpit at all at all and um but the one thing you i was going to say about the revival thing is i maybe sometimes i sound like i really I'm adamant, but I know that there are some things that are speculation. So um, I think maybe the the falling away is going to look like a revival. Like the all their some of their prophecies that I think are you know mostly BS, but there are a billion soul harvests and there's going to be stadium football stadiums full of people instead of having football. Yeah. They're gonna all be there. But they're not born Jesus again though. They're not born again though. That's what's sad. <laughs> That's what's yes. It is really sad because, um, uh, 
it's that whole uh i have it here right somewhere um about preaching another gospel and another jesus mm -hmm. like there's literally another jesus it's marshmallow cuppy cake um jesus that's like the ones that people are meeting in heaven and you know he's got flowing brown hair. Oh, you mean when they're giving the visions, that. you know, of Jesus? Yes. And Jesus doesn't preach he the gospel. Sweet. You know, he's he just, loves roller coasters. Yeah, and he likes yeah. to ride horses. That, you know, it's, all it, that it's, it's it's never convicting people of sin, right? It's Jesus is nothing no, but never. love, and there's no accountability or conviction or anything like yeah. that. And look, like I understand that some churches people go to, it's all fire and brimstone, and there's a duck and balance yeah. between preaching the love of Christ and the love of God and the judgment and condemnation of God and Jesus Christ. Okay, like they did, you know, like when Jesus was eating with the sinners, he wasn't just allow, you know, not mentioning, hey. You know, you shouldn't be sitting, you know, you know, he was, he was telling them you shouldn't be sitting. They should turn to God. You know, he would eat with them, but he would also rebuke yeah. them. And a lot of people live yeah. that out. I mean, he told the, the, the prostitute go and sin no more. He didn't say right. I accept and affirm your lifestyle that they were going to stone to death. Yeah. He goes, go and sin no more. He's so, both. Yes. Yeah. He's both. It's like. You got to wrap your head around that. You know, it's like the, it's the cross, you know, it's the love of God and it's the wrath of God at yes. the same time. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, I mean, I, I it, it is a lot. God put certain things. I think like parent, like the family, mothers, fathers, having two people, having a baby together and a, a parent loving a child and a child, wanting that connection with your parent or with your child but things happen when they're when they're bad or, you know whatever like you have to correct that because the reason why is you want to have that close loving relationship but when they're ah, you know whatever you have it's it, he put these things in here for us to know him and to relate to him and there are times like i've had in my life where i had to say to one of my kids you i love you i but you can't live here you know, and that's heartbreaking, but it's like you, sometimes that's where it's at. Well, that's the tale of the and, prodigal son, right? The parable of the prodigal son. Yeah. Some do return and when they return, you rejoice, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, and, and the that, father was waiting, watching. And, and, his, watching son, and, and his son was suffering, you know, poor eating husks, you know, had no money, just de completely destitute. You know, because of yeah. him, him leaving the father and, and being uh, disobedient. Um, and then, you know, yeah. and, and then, you know, coming back and, and so, you know, a lot, of, a lot of Christians, you know, I, I do believe I could be wrong, but I do believe that, you know, I'm going to see Jeffrey Dahmer in heaven. You know, I, I believe the pastor that spent time with him and, and preached the gospel to Jeffrey Dahmer. And, and, you know, and I believe that Dahmer did become born again. And uh, a lot of Christians, you know, get very upset about that. They're like, he was a horrible human being that ate people and killed people. And it's like, yes, he's a fallen sinner, just like me and just like you and just like everyone else. And he was demon possessed. And yes, some people aren't as, um, degenerate as others. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. um, you know, I, I don't believe in complete total depravity in that regard. You know, I do believe that we're made in the yeah. image of, of Jesus Christ so that some people are more depraved than others as far as the unsaved. Right. And even the saved more are obedient to God more than others, you know. So, yeah. And so would, you know, you know, so that's the, ter the, the tell of the prodigal son is that we're supposed to rejoice just like God rejoices. You know, God wishes none to yeah. perish. You know, and so, yeah. you know, we are supposed to rejoice, you know, we're not supposed to harden our heart and close ourselves off. Like, for example, let's say Joel Osteen. Let's say Joel Osteen really, truly, you know, gets saved. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I pray to God that it does. But let's say that it does. Let's say that Joel Osteen completely repents, you know, you know. God presses upon his heart to to show good works. Maybe he gets rid of his private jets and his money, you know, or maybe he doesn't, you know, but I'm just saying he starts truly preaching the word, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the manner of which it's uh, to be preached. Or, or Kenneth Copeland, for example, you know. You know, I'd have to test the spirit for a while. <laughs> you know, I couldn't just be like, well, you know, 
But if he does, I'm not going to be upset and angry at God. I'm going to praise that, and you know, that a, a, yeah. a, someone has debauched is, is, is Kenneth Copeland, you know, became born again, you know? So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's, to me, it's kind of like a twofold thing. I focus mostly on ex trying to kind of expose, especially the occult and the occult side of this, Yeah. which is kind of, it's kind of shocking and, um, I don't think most people need to, I don't even like want to delve too, you know, far into, um, like, I don't want to read a whole entire Alice Bailey book. I don't like, I I'll read articles and I'll read quotes and I'll read a page or two online, but it's, it's too, it gets into your head. It's very, I mean, the small pamphlet book that, 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 you know, that, um, Barbara Marks Hubbard wrote, and I, I read it for my channel for Patreon. It's 61 pages, and you can hear me reading yeah. this and getting upset and having to repent because yeah. it's so just disgusting, false filth in the guise of Christian ease. And it makes me yeah. so mad because this woman is so wicked, you know, and it's yeah. sad that she didn't repent, you know, that she is in Hades awaiting judgment, you know, and, 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 and you know, this this woman did a lot to implement the beast system for Satan. And, you know, yeah. and she would, she would smile if she saw how far they even, I mean, she's only died the past few years, but just to see how far that the, yeah. the, the plan has come into fruition. Um, and, uh, you know, and the persecution of Christians, which is starting world. I mean, it's already been happening worldwide, but the yeah. political Christian nations, it's really starting to, to pick up. And, you know, this would make a, a smile to this woman's face, you know, and it's, yeah. it, it's tough, man. It is a former new ager. This, the stuff just, it weighs, like you have to be in the full armor of Christ, you know, like if you're a born again, Christian and you're all, you're on, you know, the, 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 the milk as Paul would say, like you just became born again, you probably shouldn't be reading this stuff. Yeah. You know, no, no, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, it's concerning because like there's a lot of young um, young people or new Christians that they're seeking God. They they want to follow Jesus, but if they walk into one of these churches and they haven't heard the 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 um, the real gospel and know about atonement and and repentance and all that. You know that the new life, the way that you change and you fall, you go a different direction. You don't just add on. You know Jesus is not a side dish. I keep saying that's kind of my. I don't know if I heard it somewhere or I made it up. No, you're right. He's but, either the main course in your life. He's not something you just add on. Yeah, and it's not just something you. Um. Just know that you believe he's real. You know, I think it's more than just believing he's real and he lived and he died on the cross, but that you're, um, that believing that you, of course, there's a corresponding course of, not that it's works, but there's a response to that. You know what I mean? It's well, like, what you're saying is different from an intellectual knowledge. Like someone could believe Jesus yeah. existed and that he died yeah. on the cross, but not trust him as their Messiah. Right, right. Yeah, I have, um, I found a quote. Do you know, um, it's called The Earth's Earliest Ages. Have you ever heard of that? No. The guy's name is, I think, G.H. Pem Pemberton. And now, I found this online, and I have not read the whole book. I read, like, one chapter. But this was written in 1876. Okay. And he was a theologian. And he wrote this book about the Earth's earliest ages. I think he was seeing the 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 return of the days of Noah and the ancient pagan, you know, religions and all. He was uh, all that stuff. But I came across this last year, and I don't think I even put it in a video yet. But um, I just wanted to read it because it's so interesting. Now, this is the preface to the fifth edition. And I'm just going to read like one page. Okay. Um, it says to the new edition of this book, we might add many particular 
many particulars illustrating the later development of the teachings which it attempts to expound and refute. We might point out, with no lack of examples, the still increasing prevalence of spiritualistic and theosophic doctrines in the general literature of the day. The inordinate craving for the supernatural, which many novel writers and journalists are now striving to gratify, the appalling advance which has been recently made by those who are obscuring the true nature, gospel, and mission of the only begotten Son of God, and gradually but surely changing the characteristics of the Christ into those of the Antichrist. Hmm. In 18... 80s or something wow okay. um and it, i know this is old he also says we might say much in regard to the spread of the anti-scriptural and blasphemous doctrine that the holy spirit is a feminine element in the trinity wow okay yeah no oh um he, he okay we might exhibit the rising prominence of the two distinctive marks of the great apostasy, apostasy, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Wow. And show how wow. The world is so that's Judaizing. There were Gnostic Judaizing cults. The Gnostics would say, yeah. don't marry. Wow. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 the 18, the 18 1700s, really? Yeah. The first edition, this is the preface to the fifth edition. The first edition was published in 1876. So he added, I think what he did was a few years later, he saw the theosophy stuff booming and he added more to the first the first edition to include more stuff about that because he was kind of, he, he gets into like, not everybody agrees with this, but he kind of gets into the gap theory. Um, and like I said, I just kind of found this and I've seen it referred to in a few articles I've read and quoted and stuff. Um, he also has, which I haven't read. I just saw it listed in the, wait a minute. I just thought it was, it blew my mind. No, like, I mean, for him right to write it during that time period. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Whew, most people don't so even know was, about it now. <laughs> you know? No. So. But I guess back then it was, it was new and it was like the new thing and the new fad. And it was probably go going out in magazines and different things like that. And now it's been around so long and they changed the name um, to new age or whatever, you know, like that you don't hear people saying theosophy. Who ever heard of that? I never heard of it. If you walk up to any average person, they're going to be like, what are you talking about? And it doesn't sound terrible or anything. But I just thought that was so um, mind blowing, and I guess it sh I guess it shouldn't really shock me because I am reading some of this stuff that these people wrote. But I didn't, I had hadn't come across like a contemporary Christian that was exposing it or whatever. I mean, I disagree but, with the gap theory, obviously, but I believe a born again Christian could believe in that. Yeah, I wasn't really, that wasn't really my interest in it, but I think he was, um, he explains, I think he explains a lot about the, um, the pagan, the pagan worldview or how, how yeah. intertwined that was in like Bible history, like the history of the Bible and the account of Genesis and, and the, 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 you know, the fallen, the fallen angels and the religions that came from them and, you know, stuff like that. But I just haven't had really had time to. But it's on Internet Archive, so I'm definitely going to read it. I then it's for free. You can read it on Internet. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, cool. um, I've had a bookmark for a while, and I just look at it every once. That does blow my mind. Chat. That is interesting. Yeah, I was. Woo! So let me Sorry. read. Let me bring up something. No, you're fine. Um, let me bring up. Um, let's see here. Do you want to look up the epistle? Diogenes to Matthew. So just to um, kind of give an, a, one of the earliest examples of apologetics uh, within the church, 
Um, I like to read from the epistle of Matthews to uh, Diogenetus, which I've done previously to rebuke the Judaizers that like to come on my channel sometimes. Um, and uh, so, you know, he first of all, in chapter 2, he kind of talks to the pagans and does Christian uh, apologetics to the pagans and tells them, you know, give up your idols, you know, they don't really mean anything. There's only one true God, you know. And, and, and so after that, he starts talking about... Um, uh, the Judaizer. So he writes, and next I imagine that you are the most uh, desirous of hearing something on this point. Actually, I'm actually going to read, have a better translation of this real quick. Um, here we go. I like this one better. And next, about those who do worship God, not in the same way as the Jews. Um, reading, reading it right. Yeah. Um, I think you are especially anxious to hear. The Jews, therefore, beca because they abstain from this, the previously mentioned worship, may hold the opinion rightly to worship the one God of the universe and think him master. But if they offer him this worship in the same way as those already mentioned, he's talking about the pagans. They miss the mark badly, so the Jews miss it too. Okay, so you know, at least the Jews think that they're worshiping one God compared to the pagans, right? But they still mess up. Yeah. Um for by marking offering, offerings to these things without feeling or he, he, hearing, the Greeks furnish an example of foolishness. So also these regarding God as having need ought rather to consider that they show foolishness, not godliness. For the one who made heaven and earth and all that is in them, and who provides all to us for which we have need, he himself would not have need of these things, which he himself grants to those who who think to give them. Indeed, those who think to offer sacrifices to him by blood and burnt fat and whole burnt offerings, and by these honors honor him, it seems to me no different than the one who shows the same generous zeal to the deaf images, which would be idols, for some offer to those who are not able to have share in the honor, and offers uh, 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 others offer thinking to give to the one having need of nothing. But indeed, the anxiety about their food, and the superstition about the Sabbath, and the arrogance of circumcision, and the pretense of fasting and new moon festivals, I do not think you need to learn from me that they are ridiculous and not worthy of an argument. For then the things created by God for the use of people, some of which were created by to receive as good, others of which to be rejected as useless and superfluous, how is this not forbidden? And to falsely accuse God is forbidden to do something good on the Sabbath day. That's when, you know, Jesus was healing people on the Sabbath day, right? Uh, how is this not impious? And even to boast the mutilation of the flesh as proof of election, as because of this being especially loved by God, how is this not worthy of ridicule? And attending to the stars and moon to make observance of months and days, and making a distinction between the plans of God and the changes of the season, seasons, making some of which into feasts, others which into times of mourning, according to their own impulses and not of God. Who would consider this example of godliness and not so much of foolishness? Therefore, I think you've learned sufficient, sufficiently that Christians rightly, rightly abstain from the general silliness and the deception and the fussiness and the pride of the Jews. Do not expect to be able to learn from a person the mystery of their own, uh, their own um, religion. So, again, you know, just like the guy that you read, G.H. Pember, and what he's disgusting, um, you know, that would obviously um, go along with the heresies that the early church was, uh, was fighting during the first century, which was Judaizing uh, and uh, mm -hmm. Gnosticism, uh, yeah. which, what do we see now? Hebrew roots oh, yeah. and New Age Gnosticism. So, and yeah. it's, it's increasing by leaps and bounds. So, yeah. yeah um, I guess nothing new is under the yeah. sun, right? John, I have that in my notes right here. That which has been is what will be. That which is, is done is what will be done. And there's nothing new under the sun. Yep. Is there anything of which it may be said? See, this is new. <laughs> it has already been in ancient times before us. Yep. And that's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Yeah, that, um, you know, um, it, I, it, it doesn't, it hasn't changed. It's, it's only going to increase if we're truly living in the end times or the prelude to the end times. It's only going to increase, um, you know, and, and I mean, you know, when I'm reading, you know, uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard, and of course you're covering, you know, a lot about Blavatsky and, and Bailey, uh, which I'll eventually get to Bailey. Uh, and there's... I guess one thing is it's kind of like the did she really give those ten 
laws to the United Nations or not. Like, I can't really prove that, yeah. you know. It sounds like something she would say, yeah. obviously, but I can't find any record of it um, myself, yeah. personally. I know you've looked, too, um, and haven't been able to find anything as well. Um, but, um, well, which I've covered in, in my series discussing Barbara Mars Harbor's work, I mean, they, you know, she worships, she talks about the powers of God, um, being uh, atomic energy and bioengineering and longevity. Uh, she says right here is if the selfish were to inherit, which, you know, the selfish would be the Christians, right? Um, were to right. inherit the evolutionary Self. capacities, early external aspects of Christ's ability, nuclear energy, biotechnology, longevity, self-replicating machines, the power to build new worlds, they would self-destruct and then process, destroy the whole of humanity. So, to me, that sounds like those are not um, what Jesus commanded us to do, or the powers of God, or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, to me, that seems like that would be kind of like their satanic inversion of, of, of power of worshiping atomic energy. I mean, Alice Bailey worshiped atomic energy, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, and that was... Um... Somewhat in that uh, video that Mike Winger did, mm -hmm. where they're talking about sound and vibrations and all that kind of quantum mysticism and promoting that. Um, I had found a article that was comparing Barbara Marks Hubbard to Latter Rain or Joel's Arm. Oh, that's interesting. Rain. I've never heard that connection. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. I'm going to find it because I told you I had 14 pages of notes. I wasn't kidding. Because I, because um, I, anything you talk about Barbara Marks Hubbard, I'm down because yeah. she's the one that I'm studying them. I mean, I should actually go back and read Alice Bailey and, um, you know, disc you know, kind of discuss her. It was crazy. When I was a New Ager, you know, I, I never really read their works, right? I, and, and there's many New Agers that talk about that. I know Josh Peck talks about it in his book, The Second Coming of, uh, Second Coming of the New Age. Um, yeah. Uh, that um, a lot of New Agers, they kind of just read, like, people discussing. Like, they won't, like, read Barbara Marks Hubbard's books, right? But they'll read quotes or people discussing Barbara Marks Hubbard, right? And they'll go, yeah, 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 I agree with that. Kind of like cherry-picking, you know? But they're not really actually yeah. reading their words, you know? So, yeah. but um, did you find it? Yeah, I, um, I'll just, I'll just start here. This is an article. I'll send, maybe I'll send you the link because it's okay. really long. I tried to just pick out a few good parts, but, um... This is, um, it's called New Age and Latter Rain. It says, Barbara Marks Hubbard's new beginnings are based on the evolution of man into godhood. Yeah. And the newly energized Latter Rain movement is bringing this evolutionary model into the church. Yeah. When you hear Latter Rain, because I've done a whole bunch of videos on Latter Rain Manifest Sons of God. This is the new Apostolic Reformation. Rebranded, yeah. re renamed. It's the exact same doctrine. It goes back to William Branham and all these gnarly people, Bill Johnson, Todd White, Chris Vallotton, um, even Benny Hinn, talking about William Branham was the greatest prophet ever. And he was probably a Freemason. And he was getting messages from angels. And he, his pier, his um, tombstone is a big pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. I remember you um, talking about that in the video and showing pictures of that, which Paul said, if anyone should bring you another gospel or, you know, of angels or anything like that, let them be accursed. Yeah. 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 It's, it's weird, but, but that's not like, that's another connection with the new age. Like they're getting messages from spirit guides, angels, whatever. And these new apostolic people are doing, they're, they're encouraging the same thing. Grave soaking. Oh, I'm sorry. The only What's that? What they call soaking. grave that's, soaking. That's Kabbalah. And you know, that's so Kabbalah. satanic. Yeah, it's so... I uh, imagine you're going to a grave of someone who likely wasn't born again, okay? But you're going to call them a saint, right? And you're going to think yeah. that you can take some of their mystical power to do miracles and yeah. somehow that's Christian? <laughs> somehow, that, you know, it, yeah. it's taught in the Bible as a good thing? It's like, no, the whole entire Bible, you know, God, you know, that's... You, you, you know, you're doing it, it by your will and not God's will. You know, it's straight up magic and witchcraft, you know? No. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's, un, 
Unbelievable. Um, it says the only differences lie in the outworking of the concept. In the latter rain doctrine, man must first receive Christ and then mature to the point where he incarnates him. In Hubbard's version, man is born a god and must only come to a realization of the fact. That's true. Yeah, she does say that. Um, and that we're able to co-create uh, with God, which is utter blasphemy. Yeah. You know, like, and I've heard that come out of out of Christian mouths. I've heard that. I mean, the little God uh, doctrine. You know, Kenneth Copeland yeah. you know, teaches that and everything. Yeah, um, it's yeah. utter blasphemy. I mean, Jesus talks about the slave is not greater than the master, right? So, you know, right. um, he suffered, and and so shall we in his name's sake. So, you know, I mean, obviously, God never tells you to bow the knee and worship you know, any earthly yeah. person, right? You know, so, you know, the only people that we're allowed to worship, or people, but the only, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of yeah, the right terminology. We're only supposed to worship God and Jesus, you know, so right. why did would anybody think that, um, and I know God and Jesus aren't people there. I I just was trying to search the terminology for that, you know, of, of who, you know, we're, we're only supposed to worship them. Um, you know, so... Again, you know, a lot of the Hebrew Roots people and the one is Pentecostalists, which one of Pentecostalists are just confused more than the Hebrew Roots people. But, the, you know, the kind of like the Noahide laws, the Judaizers and the Jews, they they think that worshiping Jesus is um, worshiping another God. Yeah. Which is simply not true. So. Right. Um, let me see. Okay. Uh, remember that. Okay, the same idea is true regarding immortality. In the latter reign, there is a fresh receiving of the Holy Spirit and then maturing into Christ until one becomes immortal. But in the new age, the seed of immortality is said to be already present at birth. Mm -hmm. These are two very different. These are two different means to immortality, but the adversary's desired result is the same: godhood. Um. Okay, in latter rain, the latter rain teaches that the church replaces Israel. In latter rain, it is the church that inherits the blessings of Abraham and instead of Christ, takes the blessings to the nations. But Hubbard's Christ also replaces Israel with another body of people as heirs of God apart from Christ. It says Hubbard's Christ, this is her quote, it is not as biological Jews nor as biological Christians that you will be selected. Yeah, she does say that. That's true. And another one, she says, who do you suppose those children of Israel are, dearly beloved? They are you who love God above all else, your neighbor as yourself and yourself as me. You are sealed in your foreheads. Oh, Israel, awaken to the reality of your potential to be heirs of God. See, it's complete, that sounds very it's, it's, com it's complete perversion. You know, I would say, you know, as born again Christians, we're spiritual Israelites. You know, so you know we are accounted. We get the spirit of adoption. You know, when we become born again, when we're saved uh, by God's grace yeah. through our faith. Um, and so, you know, there is only one begotten Son of God, right? That's Jesus Christ. Uh, but we become adopted children of God. It's different. OK. Um, and, you know, we are we are, we are lesser. We're never equal. We're never greater. OK. That was the satanic lie that Satan, the serpent, told Eve in the Garden of Eden. Right. Eat and you shall be as gods, you know. So, right. you know, that that that's that lie that you could be equal. You could co-create with God, that you could be greater than God. You can be a God. And that's simply not true. Now, yes, of course, you know, born again believers, after we 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 face the judgment seat of Christ, the new heaven and new earth as we made, um, you know, we're eventually, you know, and there's we're going to be in, um, or you know, with the final battle of Armageddon as well, um, we're going to the saints will be an incorruptible, perfect, sinless bodies, but that still doesn't make us. It's powerful or equal to right. or greater than Multiple God or times. Jesus. You know, that's silly, you know. So, know. but that's what they believe. That's what they're teaching in in the um, within the New Apostolic Reformation. That's what they're teaching. Yeah. Um, they're they're teaching that you know they're going a step further. 
They're going way yeah. there. I mean, they're going into utter blasphemy. I mean, that's what um, Kenneth Copeland teaches, you know, a little God yeah. philosophy, you know, and, you know, yeah. we are slaves, willing slaves, willing, you know, servants, subservant yeah. to God, the father, of Jesus Christ, you know, God and Jesus are the righteous King. You know, God, the father is the righteous King. Right. And so right now, Jesus sits on the right hand of God the Father, but after the end of recorded time in the New Earth, New Jerusalem, he sits next to God the Father. So, you know, we're, I, there's nowhere in the Bible that they get this from. So this is poison satanic doctrine. And it's man-made doctrine as well, right? There's no biblical basis to this. Yeah, it's it's all very twisted and um i mean they will use bible verses but they they twist the meaning of things like that like the manifested sons of god for instance um that one you know i probably heard it but i didn't really like get that they were what they were saying maybe at the time back in the day but um but that's where they're essentially believing that Jesus is going to incarnate this special group of elite believers that are the super powered Christians. So it is similar to a new age idea of being Christed or Christhood or Christ consciousness mm -hmm. where they believe. So they couch it in, they have to use Bible terms and they couch it in that, but they believe that Jesus is coming back as incarnating them. And that's why it's like dangerous too, because they believe that they're going to be the ones enacting vengeance. God and 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 you know, God says vengeance is mine. You know, destroying God's enemies, they're going to be the ones doing it, not him. And we're the ones that they're going to be destroying. Because if you're not a bit, if you're not on board with them, just like the um the cleansing thing, the the cleansing is in both Barbara Marks Hubbard and Alice Bailey. And the new apostolic mm -hmm. reformation, yeah. which a lot of the new apostolic Re Re reformation people probably don't realize it. But like a lot when you go back to the earlier latter rain teachings and even like the early um, Kansas City prophet days, they were saying this stuff. You know, yeah. they were um, yeah. they were talking about how they were going to have to wreak vengeance on God's enemies, including the old believers or the old, you know, kind of the, you know, it's, it's just so weird how it lines up with so many new age things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, in, in revelation, um, you know, the doom of Babylon, you know, during Armageddon, uh, the saints will wage war with Jesus. Um, but not in the way that they're talking about, <laughs> you know, yeah. they're talking about, yeah. You know, pretty much they're going to rage war against born again believers. <laughs> I mean, the New Agers say it too, right? I mean, Barmer yeah. ever said that they're the pale horse rider that they're going to cull one fourth of humanity. You know, and yeah. so they kind of have that, um, you know, kind of like uh, that belief, right? You know, um, and so you know they also like to take uh, something that you know you've talked about in your videos. They like to take a specific scripture that I'm about to read. And they like to bend it to bend it to their own uh, will and to their own delusion, uh, you know, which is uh, John fourteen eleven through thirteen. Uh, believe me that I am the in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for thy very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than they shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whoever ye shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father will be may be glorified in the Son. Jesus is talking to the apostles. He's talking to, to you know anybody who reads this who, who's a born again believer too as well. And what he's saying is is there's only so much that I can do on earth as the Son of Man because Jesus is both the Son of Man and the Son of God, right? So during his earthly ministry, there is only a, the time period that he has allowed, which is give or take about three years, that he's able to do yeah. during that time period. The miracles that he performs as the Son of God, Son of Man. And, um, you know, uh, preaching, you know, the, you know, the, the, the truth that he is the Messiah and, and, and preaching God's word, you know, there's only so much that he was able to do during that limited amount of time. So in this, right. you know, 
scripture, you know, Jesus is saying, you know, the 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 body of born again believers, the bridegroom of Christ will be able to go on and, you know, God will work through them. I will work through them. And they will be able to do more than I was able to do during my earthly ministry here on earth as a son of man. Okay? And they take that and they go, well, you can do what Christ did and you can do more and go above Jesus. And that's in the context. That is not what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, um, I was just, I just heard somebody was, somebody talk, teaching about that too, that, um, Jesus could only be in one place at one time while he was here. He could only talk to so many people at one time. And once, you know, even after the Holy Spirit came and, and like Peter preached and 3000 people got saved in one day, that could have been considered a greater work right there just right. because uh, the, the response and and the, and he said he would send the holy spirit that more people could be reached when he did go to the after he did go to the father yeah you know it doesn't mean that more people are going to be raised from the de- you know all that stuff uh i'm sorry not stuff but um plus also um that works aren't isn't the same as miracles maybe like the word in the greek that he said works and then the other things the the signs or the miracles that he did might not be the exact same you know might not be the same thing yeah it might it it might be preaching Mm -hmm. it might be you know doing you know things that glorify the father right um, it might yeah. be different than the actual miracles that Jesus performed, too. I've heard that as well. Um, but yeah. the New Age takes it as you'll be able to walk on water and you'll be able to raise people from the dead and you'll be able to, you know, do yeah. all these things. And it's like, look, I'm not going to say that God hasn't worked. I mean, Paul raised the man from the dead that fell out of the, you know, you know, the yeah. um, tour. And I'm not going to say that. Miracles like that, God hasn't worked through people because I'm not a cessationist, okay? Um, yeah. And that you know, God hasn't worked through people uh, and um, miracles have happened like that. Um, you know, maybe not quite to that extent, but healings have, you know, and, and, um, and, uh, and I'm not going to, you know, God is ultimately sovereign. I'm not going to limit what he can do, okay? But it's rare, as Mike Winger would say, it's it's rare. It's a rare occurrence yeah. in the Bible. It's a rare occurrence in life. You know, but these people yeah. with their lying signs and wonders want you to think that it happens all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jesus said that an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. Like you're seeking, you're not supposed to be seeking for signs and miracles and wonders. You're supposed to be seeking him Mm -hmm. first and then when you add that into the multiple times that we're warned about um false and lying signs and wonders you know that it just makes you and you when you add it all up you know this the the movement that we're talking about and between their um their their bad doctrine their elevation of man and their like bringing Jesus down, you know, they're, they're definitely what they, a lot of them teach, at least it seems like there are a lot of them are on the same page. You can't put them, everybody in the same boat, but um, you've got someone like Kenneth Copeland and then you got Bill Johnson and you think they're like different, but they're not, they're, they're, they're kind of the same. And actually Kenneth Copeland just showed up at Bethel recently. I didn't, I watched a little bit about that, but it was like, oh my gosh, like, are, what more do you need? Like, they're showing you who they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, Copeland's, um, the kenosis Jesus, you know, um, Copeland, Bill, Bill Johnson, Todd White, and I've heard other ones, but it lines up very much with the actually what, I mean, Freemasons talk about Jesus too, but it's, that he was born as a man 
and but he was in a right relationship with God, and it was the whole like so. Yeah, and when the Holy that. Spirit came on him, when the Holy Spirit came on him is when he like became. It's like he attained Christhood, which is what the New Age teaches, and it is, and it's also what the. Um, I have a. I have. I'm going to find my uh, Freemason quotes. Um, I'm trying to remember which heresy that is. Oh, there's kenosis. so many. There's so many of them. Yeah. Um. It's not docetism. Docetism was that there's uh, uh that Jesus was. It was almost like a Gnostic interpretation that he didn't exist in a physical body. His physical body was an illusion. Um. Which I used to actually believe some of that as a New Age Gnostic. I hate to admit that, but. I will admit my past full oh. sinful self. <laughs> and so I used yeah. to believe in that heresy uh, to some degree. Um, I thought it was kenosis. So you think it's kenosis? Or, okay. or, the, canonic, or the canonic heresy or something where he emptied himself and divested himself of um, uh, what's the, the, the scripture where he, uh, he emptied himself. They they say he emptied himself of divinity. It yeah, it's kenosis. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Which I think I want to say there's a there's a there's actually a lot of famous um, New Apostolic Reformation and Prosperity Gospel uh, teachers that almost kind of believe that that it wasn't until um. It wasn't until the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus that he became um Yeah. The Son of God. Yeah, we should we should look that up. Um <sighs> I don't remember what it's called. I mean he lay he, I don't think he didn't lay aside his divinity. He laid aside his um If anybody in the chat you could help me out with that. I I can't remember because Todd White uh discussed a canonic Christ, uh, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, and um, Todd White gets it from Kenneth Copeland, and he gets it from Bill Jones, and they all, they all, they all stick together. And ew. um, here's a Freemasonry quote: "It says Jesus of Nazareth had attained a level of consciousness of perfection that has been called by various names: cosmic consciousness, soul regeneration, philosophic initiation, spiritual illumination, Brahmic splendor, and Christ consciousness." Um, here's another one. This is ancient mysteries and modern masonry. Thus, study, studying the inner teachings of the mysteries, we see that Christ is not a unique personage, but the first fruits, the promise of man made perfect. Adoptionism. Adoptionism is what it is. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know that one. Um, it is a non-trinitarian theological doctrine that Jesus was adopted as a son of God as uh, at his baptism, his resurrection, or his ascension. Wow. Meanwhile, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word mm -hmm, was God. And the word mm -hmm. was yeah. Um, I almost want to say, let me look it up. I almost want to say T.D. Jakes kind of taught something like that, if I remember correctly. Probably. We're all in the big club. Nah, I, I, yeah, yeah, okay. He has taught something similar to adoptionism. I thought so. Um, I mean, imagine that that you believe that Jesus didn't become divine until the Holy Spirit, you know, he got baptized by John the Baptist and the Holy Spirit, you know, descended upon him like a dove. And that's when he became divine. And that's when he was adopted because we're adopted. Again, we're given the spirit of adoption, but Jesus is, is the son of God. He didn't yeah. have to be, a, he's the only begotten son of God. Okay. So there's no right. spirit of adoption with Jesus. Right. So, so this, is, this is their way to essentially give you the same theology as a new ager on the deity of Christ. And the deity of Christ is like one of the most foundational important things that we have. Yes. You know? Yes. Um, and, um, I forget. And some adoptionists denied the virgin birth of Jesus. 
Which then again, mm. you get the Talmudic blasphemy that G that Mary cheated on Joseph with uh, Pantera. Yeah. Which I mean, the Talmud says blasphemous things about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um. But, so, uh, let's talk about um Left Behind for a minute. What did you uncover about uh um uh, Jerry Jenkins, um, Dallas Jenkins, The Chosen. Let's talk about that for a moment, okay? Yeah. Um, for Jerry B. Jenkins, he, um, the main, I mean, for me, one of the main things was that, uh, to me, I mean, this was just to me that him and, um, What's his name? Tim Left LaHaye. Behind author. Tim, Tim LaHaye. Tim LaHaye. Just knowing Tim LaHaye and him are working together on a book that, you know, would not prepare Christians for facing any kind of uh, end times difficulties. Would you, you, would you um, have talked about... Which, I mean, Tim LaHaye was a, f a founding member of the CMP who took money from the Unification yeah. Church from the Reverend Sung Ma Moon, who was a heretic, to start right. the CMP. Um, and, and so he right. came up with the idea, supposedly, and Jenkins was the writer of the whole Left Behind series. But one thing that we yeah. discussed, we discussed off air back and forth about it is, is, and it's something my friend Jesse Spots, you know, he despises the Left Behind movies and books, and I agree with him on this. Is And there's other Christians who brought this up, too, as well that the Left Behind series, it's not about, okay, these people are left behind and they become born again and they go out and preach the gospel. And then, you know, some of them, you know, might survive, you know, the, the tribulation, but some of them don't and they die preaching the gospel. Like, you know, the, the martyrs before them, the saints before them. No, it's, they're just trying to survive and, and try to, try to kind of like, um, uh, um, kind of outwit the Antichrist and expose the Antichrist. It's like, yeah. oh, that sounds very yeah. like great awakening to me, you know? Yeah. It, um, I'm trying to find that article. Sorry. It's okay. Is that, I mean, is that, is that what you, what you thought, you know, ha, okay. Have you ever read the left behind books, which I have not, uh, but I have seen the movies. No, the I, old one and the new one. I think my mom had them. I know. I'm trying to remember if I even saw it. I was aware of it. I don't think I ever saw it. I know it was something that the church I went to and youth group and stuff like that um were promote, you know, were promoting. And to be honest with you, as a a Christian that got saved and was in a charismatic church mostly for most of my life. Um, I honestly, I hadn't heard really any other option. Like it never, it never even occurred to me. Um, like I said, we didn't, we didn't get very much good teaching. And I think you would just, you would have to s decide to study it yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, or, or look into it. Um, but just from my own, just regular church experience and just even reading my Bible, you you put those lenses on and you just kind of see things through that kind of assumption. But when you, when you take that off and you just read it, um, it's kind of hard to find, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now there's a new one, you know, mm -hmm. the whole new left. Behind. I don't know what it's called. I think it's, um, you know, they made a left behind left series behind. for kids. They did. Yeah, they did. Oh, no, mm -hmm. I did not. They did, yeah. And I mean, you know, Dallas Jenkins, he created The Chosen. He's Jerry Jenkins' son, right? And and uh, right. The, the Chosen has many... I mean, I the, chose, the, 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 the Jesus of The Chosen ain't the Jesus of the Bible, all right? And so the biggest yeah. controversy here yeah. lately is him pretty much quoting the Book of Mormon and saying, I am the law of Moses. And Jesus never said that in the Bible, but he did say that in third Nephi 15, nine in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. So, you know, Jesus said he fulfilled 
God's law as a perfect unblemished sacrifice, but yeah. he's not the law of Moses. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, find. I mean, finding out that um, that so much of the Mormon influence and so many times where um, Dallas Jenkins is you know, just talking out of both sides of his mouth and call, you know, calling Mormons, his brothers and sisters, and we love the same Jesus. And, you know, if you know what, I mean, when I was younger, it seemed like there was more cult awareness. Like, I don't know, when I was a young Christian in my twenties, we knew about Mormons and we knew about Jehovah witnesses. We knew that the most important thing was what do they say about Jesus? Like, is he, is he the only begotten son of God, you know, and all that stuff Did he die for our sins. And when you find out like, um, Mormons are basically Freemasons. Yeah. And that's weird. I didn't, I didn't know that. I just knew they had a completely different concept of, of Christ and the whole thing about, you know, they're all going to become gods and go off and have celestial sex forever and have it on their own planet. And, um, just, or Seven you know, Day Adventists, you know they, you know I I'm not going to say that there aren't people within the Seventh Day Adventist Church that are that are that are that are um that are not that 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 are are, are not born again. There are, but 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 yeah. it is another doctrine and another gospel uh, spawned from Ellen G. White and their belief that. Worshiping God and Jesus on Sunday is the mark of the beast, um, and that you have to keep the Saturday Sabbath to to be saved. Uh, that's that's heresy. Yeah, I a couple years ago I found this guy, and I was listening to him for a while before I realized he was a Seventh Day Adventist. Um, yeah, a lot of them are very well, sneaky like that. Very sneaky. He was doing really good. Um, the occult roots of the United Nations and, you know, a lot of Alice Bailey stuff and just really like a lecture, you know, with lots of slides and everything, everything seemed like I would totally swear I was on the same page with them. And then when he got to the Mark of the Beast thing, it was like, what? Then I was like, oh man, what, what is this? You know, cause it, they believe it's going to church on Sunday. That's the mark of the beast. It's just that that one's really um, dumb. No, I'm sorry, John. I was trying to find that article you sent me that I used for um, the the chosen video. Yeah. Um, the it, the Jerry the Jerry Jenkins stuff. Yeah, it's, it was. Uh, it's okay if you can't find it. I was just gonna discuss. I know you're doing videos on it and. Um, you know, gonna yeah, that's the one that I got. Um, so I do you know the difference between your video being blocked and getting a strike? Yes, blocked means that people can't view it, but you don't kind of you don't get a penalty. So I've had okay. some of my videos being blocked from other countries, but um, yeah, um, you know, I I but yeah, I I would I would say that, um, you know, um. So, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, necessarily, if someone told me that they were a Seventh Day Adventist, I wouldn't call them a fellow brother and sister in Christ outright, you know. Um, you know, I'd, I'd have to ask them a couple of questions before <laughs> I would say that, you know. Uh, um, so they're a cult. New Apostolic Reformation's a cult. Mormon's a cult. Jehovah's Witness a cult, you know. Yeah, um, and and, um, and what about the Catholic influence? I mean, Mike from Onport Preparedness did a great video of the guy, the actor that plays Jesus in The Chosen, um, uh, and the Catholic Great Awakening yeah. deception that he's pushing, you know. And then yeah. and then, um, um, you know, uh, uh, Passion of the Christ, right? We're gonna get Passion of the Christ Boy too, and Jim Caviezel is very much queued yeah. up in the Great Awakening too. Actor yes. that, that played Jesus Christ in the in in um the Passion of the Christ and, and I mean remember even Passion of Christ is, is is Catholic, it's a Catholic movie, 
It's kind of a movie. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, and, um, you know, I'm, so you got to be careful when you're watching these things. Um, you know, yeah. uh, and, you know, some people will say, well, John, you're Catholic bashing now. And it's like, look, there are some people in the Catholic Church that, you know, believe that they're saved by God's grace through their face and they read their Bible and, you know, they're born again Christians. They should come out of the Catholic Church. Obviously, but you know, there's there's same with the NAR. You know, there's many people that go to horrible churches, uh, and even Paul writes about that. And I'll find this specific scripture that we are supposed to rejoice that God can save people, even when they're exposed to bad doctrine. Uh, I'll have to get the yeah. specific uh, uh, scripture in a minute, uh, but. Uh, you know, and so we're not supposed to obviously we're supposed to counter counter bad theology, obviously, because doctrine matters. But you know, there are people that are saved despite of uh, bad doctrinal teachings within the Catholic Church or the Orthodox Church or even some Protestant churches. You know, so yeah. Um, is there anything that you want to talk about in closing, Laura? Specifically, anything that you can think of? Um, in closing, anything on your mind? Anything? Well, I mean, I think I think the main thing that's important is the realization, I mean, I guess the realization of what is actually happening and seeing it. For me, um, I know a lot of people are paying attention to what's going on in the world and all the, you know, who's the psychopaths that are running the world, you know. And a lot of people know about the history of it going back decades and centuries and stuff. The realization, I guess, that it's not just in Hollywood or the music industry or in government or on all these other things. It's in the church and not just the Catholic church, because it seems like it's always the Catholic church is the is Babylon. It's the, you know, whatever, um, the false religion and the anti religion or the Antichrist is going to be a pope and all that stuff. But um to really be on guard against deception i mean it, it does seem like in even in matthew 24 jesus when he was saying all the giving the list of all the things that were going to happen in order that match up with the book of revelation he met he, he warned the first thing he warned about was do not let anyone deceive you and yeah. i think the biggest deception is coming like you know what we were talking about all this stuff's being revealed all this corruption and all the child whatever stuff everyone's starting to see it and kind of freak out all at one time and and that's right at the time when i was getting learning all this stuff to yeah. see it all really coming out everything that happened in 2020 and since then it's overwhelming and the more and more people that are becoming like truthers and stuff like that or just it's not even about being truthers but there are true things happening that you're you're you know you're learning about that you just you can't it's hard to wrap your brain around it and i think one of the hardest things for me to wrap my brain around which i have but it's still an ongoing process is that i just do believe that the in the end times the enemy is going to target Christians and it's not going to nest only be targeting by persecuting them, but it's going to be targeting by seducing them. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and to see that just like we can say, um, they're all in this club or there's like the secret societies and the, and whatever that are running, running things, different ones. Um, not just Freemasons, but, it's just as much in the church category, I think, as it is anywhere else. That the t the people at the top, they didn't get there. Just like you know, yeah. you know, you see all these montages of Hollywood celebrities doing this. Everyone, athletes, politicians, actors, singers, grannies, J Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, you know yeah. all of them. And. Maybe I'm going to do a video. It's going to take a lot longer to like piece it together, but the, the symbolism will be their downfall. Yes. But all, all, with, all with, um, preachers and, and prophets and whatnot, you know, hey, what I mean? instead of the QAnon version of the Illuminati yeah. symbolism in Hollywood, that yeah. Satan's throwing in your face. Look how evil it is. Of course yeah. it is. 
you know? Yeah. It's just, it's hard because you don't want to not trust any, you don't want to say I can't trust anybody, but um, you need to put your hope and your trust in the Lord and, and above all, we should, yeah. you know, we're, you know, and we're not, we're not supposed to like be afraid of death, right? Like we're, we're not supposed to be that, that, it, that is not something that we are to fear, but if you're focus in life in the in your choice of um christian doctrine like the seven mountain mandate is is all about here and now and this world and our stuff and our dominion and our power and taking over Amen. before jesus comes back yep. it's all it's all earthly and material not looking you towards the to kingdom be- of heaven yes so the last thing i guess i would say is, is if you believe in that Jesus came, if you if you are a Christian and you believe that he came, you believe in the Bible, you believe the Bible predicted and prophesied all the things that Jesus came and that he did all those things, then you have to also believe in what comes next and what he is going to do and what the purpose of him coming, which was to reconcile us to God and so that we could have eternal life with God and not to be so... Um, stressed out i mean it's it is some of it's kind of scary but you know not to be so stressed out about the Let here and now troubled no. right yeah and build our faith on that is just as real that those all a lot of the promises of god they're all true but some of them are not are not yet you know yeah. they're for they're for after you know what i mean and and get that the reality and the um like, don't let it be just like so far off that you can't even imagine it. Like you, you, you know, I don't know how. I don't know if I'm explaining it. Right, I, but, I I understand what you're. you're you know at, what least, I mean? at least I think I could. I, at least I could think I can uh, say what you're trying to say, which is, um, we may not fully, completely see the end times into fruition yet, and it's going to be right. something greater than we could ever imagine because Jesus said, you know, up until the possible for the elect to be deceived, but rely and trust in God above all because he has us and no, nobody and no thing, Satan cannot pluck us from his hand once he has us. Right. Once we have the spirit of adoption, you know, it's a free gift. You can't, you can't give the gift back, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I, there's a quick few questions in the chat real quick. Um, but you, okay. you may or may not know, but Oswald asks, have you ever heard of, of, of a man named Gerald Hurd, the right-hand man of uh, Aldous Huxley, who introduced um, Alcoholics Anonymous Bill W. to LSD? He wrote some books on Christianity. Have you ever heard that the name of that guy I've before? Heard, I have heard about that. I don't no, – I, I have heard things about how the – AA guy got started. I always, a long time ago, it was always like, oh, there, it's Christian. It's based on the Bible and stuff. And no, now, it's reason, not. <laughs> now, now I'm, yeah, now I'm starting to find out like, oh, yeah, the higher power, you know, that could just be, yeah, all that stuff. Same, same like, I'm mid- sorry, I'm not. Same like Freemasonry, right? There's a higher power in Freemasonry, yeah. right? You know, you just have to yeah. believe in a higher power. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter. If it's God the Father and, and Jesus Christ. You know, it could be any higher power. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> another question Oswald asks: In what proportion of um what the, what 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 is being termed Christofascism or Dominionism is just a new Apostolic Reformation? What what would be your answer to that? Wait, say can you reset when can you say it again? Um proportion? And what are the proportion of Christo fascism or dominionism is just a new apostolic reformation? Um I, I, I'm sorry, I don't I don't understand the question. Um Oswald, if you can ask him, I think I understand what he's trying to say is like kind of the dominionism is, that's going on now, like how much of that is yoked with the in it new apostolic reformation? Oh, um, I would say a lot, I wouldn't say a hundred percent of it because I know there's also like a kind of a Calvinistic, uh, or reformed kind That's of true. dominion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Which yeah. I don't focus on that really Which that usually much. goes hand in hand with all millennialism. Doesn't always, I have friends who are all millennial or Calvinist yeah. that, 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 you know, don't 
Uh, but it usually goes with post millennialism or all millennialism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it seems that's doctrine. what. It does seem kind of essentially that's the new apostolic reformation. I mean, they the, the kingdom now, the kingdom's now. Like it's it's now. Um, their their eschatology is really is really warped and weird, and I don't know. Um, I I know that. So anyway, back to his question. I think it's mostly the New Apostolic Reformation, um, but I I know there's probably a lot of just really patriotic, maybe people that aren't really in the NAR mm -hmm. that are kind of in mixed in with that. But the New Apostolic Reformation, which goes also back to the latter reign, and it is a, very much about dominionism, and because the the thing that the thing about it is essentially it's part of the little God thing, okay? Because they're taking dominion. Jesus is the one that comes back and takes dominion, okay? They put themselves in the place of Christ for like so many, in so many ways. Their dominion, their authority, taking authority, taking over the world, taking over the mountains, doing this, calling angels, decreeing, declaring. Um, there's like a whole, you know, so many things. The, the cleansing you know, all of all of these things are essentially to me essentially taking on the attributes or the characteristics or even the um the job that not job, but what Jesus is going to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's I I don't think all of them think of it that way, but that's the kind of what it is. That's kind of really what it all boils what it all boils down to. And it's been indoctrinated into them for so long. And since, um, and it's really weird because um, this started with the latter rain back. I mean, you could say maybe it goes back. I mean, the it's the Catholic Church too, right? They took over everything back in the, whatever, whatever starting after Constantine all through the dark ages and stuff, you know, taking over governments, art, music, everything. Yeah. Wars, um, you know? Okay, so actually Oswald mentioned uh Okay, so yeah, I would okay, so Oswald, I would say that dominionism is more than what the left is kind of virtue signaling or scaremongering into Christo fascism. Dominionism is part of the ecumenical one world government and one world religion. Um it could manifest itself as Christ Um, but I do believe that the dominionism, uh, you know, building God's kingdom down here on earth uh, instead of which God does not need our help to do that. God is ultimately sovereign. God can, you know, <laughs> doesn't need our help in the end times, you know, the way that the dominionist, uh, reclaiming the seven mountains of Babylon, right? Um, but no, I think yeah. from from a biblical standpoint, it is going to play a role in the end times, and it is going to play a role in the B system. And it's not just scaremongering, virtue signaling from the left. It's it's real. So, yeah. Um, what's weird is um, the the kingdom of God is a, bringing the kingdom of God to earth, or building the kingdom of God, establishing the kingdom of God, and all that stuff. Is very a, a very occult idea. It's not it's not biblical at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? They want to build a utopia here on earth. They don't want God's eternal for now invisible um kingdom. But it's very weird that um you know, I quote this Alice Bailey quote all the time where she talks about the kingdom of God. And if you walked up to a new apostolic reformation person and you said this quote they would probably completely agree with it you know what i mean yeah um do, do you want me to read it yeah go ahead this is my favorite one because it kind of hits everything it's not my favorite one it's it's horrible um she said your spiritual goal is the establishing of the kingdom of god one of the first steps towards this is to prepare men's minds to accept the fact that the re reappearance of christ is imminent you must tell men everywhere that the masters and their groups of disciples are actively working to bring order out of chaos. Yeah. You must yeah. tell them there is a plan, the capital yeah. P plan. 
and that nothing can possibly arrest the working out of that plan. Nothing can stop the plan. Nothing can stop what's coming. You must tell them that the hierarchy stands and that it has stood for thousands of years and is the expression of the accumulated wisdom of the ages. <laughs> you must tell them above all else, God is love that the hierarchy is love and that Christ is coming because he loves humanity. See? Uh, were, okay, you, were, Bible... were, you, were you reading Alice Bailey there? Was that Alice Bailey? I'm yeah. Conf... Yeah, yeah. Yes. I think it's, I think that's the externalization of the hierarchy. Um, this is the message which you must give at this time. And with this responsibility, the responsibility, I leave you work, my brothers. Um, and it, she also said, okay, it is time the church woke up to its true mission, which is to materialize the kingdom of God on earth today, here, and now. Lance Wall now says the exact same thing. Yep. He flips the mountains upside down. I mean, he flips the kingdom upside down and says, it's not about eternity, or it's not only about eternity, it's about here and now. You know, and all, all the other things. And other thing that's interesting is, Okay, so Alice Bailey's talking about how to infiltrate the church and bring the New Age through the church. And she's saying the kingdom of God is here now. And William Branham, who started the latter rain thing, he started like 48, 49. So they were like right at the same time. And I and he is evidently, allegedly, a Freemason. And of course, she said she would bring about the New Age with with freemasons and using freemasonry and the church to bring it through so what it basically she staffed the church with freemasons it's not just billy graham it's not just norman vincent peel you know i think it's probably status quo and we're just i mean i'm just finding this out but i just think it's interesting that this whole um latter rain which is the dominion theology the manifest sons of god that the that in the end times they would be, and um, Brian Simmons is, is an example. The the guy who did the Passion Bible is literally repeating these manifest Son of God yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He says, "I know when Jesus is coming back, when we bring him back." You know, and he's saying like, um, "There's not going to be a tribulation. It's birth pains for this." For us to manifest and become the sons of God, and uh, we're re we are reincarnated, the reincarnation of Jesus, all this kind of stuff. And then, and then in the same, okay, this is not the same video. This is my video, but in, huh? in a different uh, event of his, he's in one of these um, um, Toronto-like services where people are screaming and moaning and. Ah, you know, it's just what it sounds crazy. And he's saying, calling fire down, calling fire. And then he's saying, put the mic of the, the mark of the Christ on our heads and on our hands. Put the mark of the Christ on our. He's saying that. The mark of the beast? Yeah, you need. The, they're calling it a mark of the Christ. We're calling the mark of the beast. <laughs> I mean, it sounds, I like a, it sounds like a mark of the Antichrist it, to me. This, I could have stopped after that one video and just said, this is it. This is all you need to see is this right yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. And this is the passion Bible guy. So anyone out there, if you have that passion, don't, Bible, throw it away, throw it, it. in the garbage, throw it in the garbage, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. Burn it, burn it, burn it. Um, yeah. And then the church is promoting all this new age weirdness while in the book of Acts, that video was great. Everybody should watch it. Mike, the Mike Winger video, because I just did a whole bunch of Alice Bailey videos last week of just reading mainly, but um, mainly to show people that when you hear about the new age and, the, and stuff, not, I don't know. I mean, I know most people who listen to you know this already, but how evil and wicked it is. Yeah. How utterly satanic it is. So when it's in the church, it's not a light thing. It's not a frivolous thing. It's a yeah. serious thing. Yes. And then Mike Winger came out with that thing today. And it's like, this is exactly what Alice Bailey wanted. And it's not even Alice Bailey. It's whatever demon master was controlling her and speaking through her planning to infiltrate the church with, with the ancient wisdom of 
you know, it's the it goes all the way back to Egypt and Babylon, yeah, all that stuff. Babylon I mean, religion, you know. I mean, it's fascinating and horrifying, but it's the same exact. It makes the Bible even more biblical. Like it's so much more of a history book. I yeah. always thought it was. Yeah. But yeah. it's the same old enemies and the same spiritual um, system, the same religion, whatever you want to call it, the the devil. Because Satan, <laughs> I hate to say, Satan can't, Satan can't, can't create anything. Yeah, it, I, it's always it's, it. it's always just throwing another co coat of paint on distorting God's word. I mean, that's what the serpent yeah. did to Eve was just distort God's word to Adam and Eve. Yeah. And so it's just Satan. All, it's like it's caught putting a new another down here. We use this colloquialism down south. Putting a new shade of lipstick on the pig. Yeah. Yeah. For different generations, just... there's different flavors of way that you can reframe the heresies, but they're the same heresies yeah. that born again believers have been dealing with since you know the dawn of recorded human time. Yeah. You know, it's it's the yeah. same. Um, you yeah. either saved by the works you do, or you're saved by hidden knowledge. Yeah, and that's a hair. That's a lie. We're saved by God's grace through our faith. That is the only way. We have to believe in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, as the Son of God, Son of Man, and in God the Father. Um, and you know, be born again, and in, 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 in the Holy Spirit dwells within us. You know, that is the only way to get to heaven. There is no. There is no way. Um, you know, and it's yeah. done by God's grace, you know, it's not done by no act of man, lest us, we should boast, you know, so I always look at it, you know, Jesus talks about he's knocking on the door to let him, to let him in, to have, to have fellowship, to have dinner within the book of Revelation. And I look at it as, you know, um, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, a full Pelagian would say that Jesus is knocking on the door and you open the door and let Jesus in, you know. And then a Calvinist will say that, you know, Jesus knocks and then at some time, you know, he lets himself in automatically, you know. And so the way I look at it, because I'm not a Calvinist, um, I, I look at it as, as Jesus opens the door. God opens the door, but you just stop resisting and pushing against the door. So it's God's working. Yeah. It's God calling you. It's God showing you grace. And it's nothing yeah. you did, you just stopped. There's no action you did. There's nothing you did, you just stopped. You took it in action. So, you know, it's different. It's like, um, I guess one last thing, and we'll close. You can tell everybody where they can find you. Um, I couldn't call the president. I couldn't call Biden. It'd be very difficult to do that, right? It'd be almost not impossible for me to get on the phone with Biden, right? But nothing's stopping Biden from calling me. <laughs> so nothing's stopping God from calling me to him, right? But I, yeah. I would be very difficult for me to, you know. So that's, I know it's, it's, it's kind of a, a silly uh, metaphor, but it fits, you know. So, um. But thank you for all your work, Laura. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you. Definitely have you back on again. This has been great. Um, yeah. where, where can everybody find your work? Mostly on YouTube. I started an Odyssey channel as a backup, so all my all my videos are also on Odyssey. Um, there's a couple on there. One is the chose the recent chosen one that I put up, and one was about. It was really good too. It was about the the wealth transfer, but I was I was showing the Kabbalah guru, the New Age, the all the different ones that are all saying the same thing. It was very inter interesting. But anyway, um, mainly YouTube Odyssey, but they're all Ma Magical Mystery Church. I also have a uh, I'm on Instagram, but I find that very everything I do is not on in Instagram. I occasionally add things to Instagram, but it it cuts off videos at 15 minutes. Yeah. I, I, if there's some trick, I don't know. I know it's really not um, the right platform for, for the videos I have, but in my bio, there's a link to my YouTube channel so people can find me there. That's it right now. That's all. Well, I I do have a Rumble, but nothing's on there. Nothing. I don't know how to use it yet. 
I'm going to I'm going to do a, a rumble, but the only way I, f- I figured that I would make one is making a video exposing rumble like I did with Patreon uh, and see how long uh, it stays up there. Uh, but our, your day is a number on YouTube. I'll or to anybody's who's preaching yeah. the gospel's day's number on YouTube. Um, yeah. And uh, and, uh, you know, I just want to say real quick, it was uh, Philippians um, 12 through 20. Where I guess real quick, I'm just going to read part where um, uh, Paul saw about the former proclaimed Christ out of selfish ambition rather than for pure motives, thinking that they are causing me distress in my imprisonment. Uh, what then only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I rejoice. So, you know, yes, um, my opinion, Joel Steen's a heretic, but he does quote from the Bible. Now he uses improper exegesis. A lot of the times, but when he is quoting from the Bible and he's proclaiming the good, the good news and the word, uh, even as satanic as Kenneth Copeland is, he's done that from time to time. Uh, we should pray for both of those these men that they repent and become born again and come to Christ. Uh, but um, you know, uh, there are people within those churches uh, that do read their Bible that do become saved. Um, and that do become born again by God's grace, uh, and do hopefully eventually leave those mega churches, you know. So in that we are yeah. supposed to rejoice that God can take something where a person is preaching the gospel for only self benefit and turn it to His glory, because God turns sinful, horrible acts into you know into His perfect will. God doesn't commit sin, but He turns these horrific acts that happen, uh, whether they're caused by Satan or caused by man's free will you know, to his greater benefit, to his glory. And so it's the same with this fallen, horrific teaching, this unsound doctrine, that through that, God will use that to impress upon people's hearts, to show them grace, and will, you know, lead him to him. And we're supposed to rejoice in that. We're not supposed to rejoice in how Joel Steen and Kenneth Copeland are acting. We're supposed to call them out. But we are supposed to rejoice that even in that fallen horrific doctrine you know the word is still preached when the bible is read may not be in a proper context but the good news is shared and people you know it will you know that is some of god's grace being shown to them and they will you know you know some of them will become born again and come to christ and that we are supposed to rejoice um so uh i want to go ahead where is there anything else you want to say in closing on on just on what you were saying i um we are to rejoice. And one of the things that I really do like about the channel is I do get to hear a lot of people, um, that have come out, you know, they, they, you know, comment and say, I can't believe that I used to believe this. And, and, you know, some of them came out of the new age. Some of them came out of, um, following Robin Bullock or somebody. And they just like, I can't believe I believe this guy, you know, like once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's, you know, and people are trusting and they just they can't imagine that this person that's portraying themselves as a man of God is completely the opposite. So anyway, it's very encouraging as much as we see so many people following all these people and stuff. People are coming out. People very are much waking so. up, people are, um, finding the truth and, and the, the, the goodness of the just simple true gospel, you know. So, and we're supposed to rejoice in that and praise God that He is able to uh, do those miraculous yeah. acts. That you know, people's own double-mindedness and arrogancy and spiritual blindness. Um, you know, uh, you, that 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 God overcomes that. You know, and they come out of that unsound yeah. doctrine, and um, you know, they they become born again, or they are born again, and they come out of that unsound doctrine. Uh, you know, and we are to praise God. You know, for that, and I do praise God. You know, I I you know I I sometimes as you know, kind of watchmen and watch women in your case on the wall. Um, we kind of forget that sometimes because we're so defending the faith against these heretics that we kind of forget that, you know, there are, we are, you know, God is working through us and people are coming out of it and being saved. Um, and that's very important. We should rejoice when that happens. Yeah. Um, but thank Very you for, crazy. thank you for coming on, Laura, magical mystery church. All the links will be in the show note for your work. Thank you very much. Uh, take care, everybody.